Corey and Corey and Brooke, it's so nice to meet you. How are you guys doing? How's everything going? I mean, great. Yeah, it's it's been a really fun, you know, morning talking about the movie. Yeah. Well, good, good. I'm, I'm literally in the Christmas spirit as like as we speak. It's it's the perfect time of year to be doing this, obviously, because you know I'm starting um putting up the Christmas lights this weekend and all that stuff. So it's it's a good time. Good stuff. You guys are in the mode, so that that's fantastic. Well, first of all, uh, this movie is adorable. It's so sweet. I really really enjoyed it. And I first of all first of all I have to have to ask you both: How many Christmas movies have you already started watching? Brooke, you first. Uh, well, I kicked off the season by rewatching Elf this weekend. So ah, that one. has firmly put me into the land of Christmas enchantment. Um, and it actually makes me have a weird craving for maple syrup with spaghetti. I don't know. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe dinner tonight. You'll see. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and Corey, how about you? Have you started yeah. watching any getting in the mode? Oh, so I have an almost three-year-old son and ah. we've been watching a lot of like the, the Pixar and Disney shorts. You know, a lot of the films have like their little Christmas special. Yes. And that's right up his alley. And I'd be lying if I said I didn't love them myself. So of course, <laughs> we're on there watching a couple of them every night and, and it's, it's gotten me right in the mode. That's fantastic. Well, this one, like I said, is so sweet. And Corey, I want to start with you because you also directed this film. So you guys are both not strangers to this genre. You've both done the Christmas films before. You're old hacks. I mean, come on. But Corey, what was it about this one that kind of struck a chord with you? Well, I mean, it started with the script. Um, and I should start by saying my wife wrote the script. So this was a real kind of, you know, family affair. Family. It was a family affair for us. So I, I, the story, obviously I was there when she came up with the concept of the story, you know, the, the small town that she kind of grew up around, yes. uh, and, you know, the Ontario kind of inspired the setting of it. So it, there are a lot of things that appealed with from that standpoint. Um, the second was I, I love to direct. Uh, I'd worked with this production company Vortex before we had this opportunity uh, last year on a film. And we wanted to do another one. Um, the first one we did was we actually shot it in the summertime. And I had this idea that I said, you know, if we're going to do a Christmas movie, I want to really do it in the winter. I want to really feel the snow and the elements. And this story kind of really lent to that. And uh, next thing you know, we were we were off to the races. Off to the races. Yeah. And and Brooke, how about you? Because again, like I said, you've, you've done these kinds of films before, mm -hmm. but this one just feels a little different, a little bit more personal. I don't know, just a closer bond maybe with the cast. That's what I was getting from it. Well, I mean, I, I did have the bonus of having worked with Corey before. So I, I came into the project knowing that I liked working with Corey and, um, and I mean, <laughs> from, the, yeah. Yeah, here. Um, from the moment I read the script, you know, I was working on, I was working on another project when the script came in and I, I remember reading the first, like, five or six pages. And I was like, yes, I'm in. <laughs> because the script just from the beginning um, set out a character that I was so excited to play. She leads with so much heart. And yes. um, there's such a, a beautiful backstory in terms of like um, why she's the type of woman who's busy and even in her sleep. Because she hasn't slowed down enough to maybe deal with some of the the, the things from her past that are preventing her from moving forward in her, in her future, right. um, which is connected to her mom and, and to Christmas time. Um, but there was so much heart in, in the script and it was, uh, so I said yes right away. And then, um, and then read the rest of the script after I said yes. And was uh, of course even more delighted. Um, but um, it is a personal story. There's um, a lot of layers to the script that I think are, are ways in for the audience. There's this lovely intergenerational um, aspect of um, the, the, the father-daughter relationship and grandmother-to-grandson relationship between Darcy and, and his, his grandma. Um, and I think it pulls the viewers in on multiple levels, not just this, this lovely romance. Yes. Um, I yeah. agree. I, told, I was going to say that about because, Corey, I, I, I do love the fact that your character is so close to his grandmother. And it just brought me back to memories of me, you know, when I, when I was a little girl. I, I couldn't, you know, my, my parents had to drop me off at my grandparents' house all the time. I would sleep there. I have memories of when I was like, I don't know, two or three years old, I swear to you, my grandmother pierced my ears on her kitchen table. 
Like, oh, I remember that, like with the potato and the whole thing, right? So oh, there was a scene in the script that with, with Darcy and his grandma, but they had to cut it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, now you can, you can write this into your next, yeah, I, pro, yeah, I will allow you to write this scene into your next script, I promise. But I know amazing. a great writer. It just brought, it just brought me back, and I wanted to ask both of you. You know, do you like how close were you, or do you have good memories of being, you know, with your grandparents at, at the holiday time, and or your, you know, you you say, uh, Corey, you have a young son, and and maybe hanging with your parents and stuff. It's so important. Absolutely. I mean, I, I can. I mean, I you know, obviously, so many memories of of my grandparents, and what's been so magical in the last few years is watching my parents become grandparents, and that relationship. Like uh, my son is so close with, with my parents and my wife's parents, you know, and it's, it is a magical relationship. And, 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 you know, uh, as, as a new parent, people say, I think this is good. Just wait till you become a grandparent because you have, you have that lovely, like all the same love, but then you get to give them back at the end of the day. After exactly. Which, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it, it is a special relationship. And, yeah. and that, you know, Kate wrote this, you know, into the script and, and, and Lynn Griffin, who played my grand is, is such a lovely actress and person Yeah, really kind of slid into that. And, and, and obviously I was, I had a lot going on on set, obviously doing both sides um, and having had the relationship I had with Brooke, um, Ron Lee, who played um, her dad in, in the, I'd worked with him before. So I tried to bring in people that I had a little bit of a shorthand with already so that those relationships hopefully would, would really shine through, um, you know, into the story. So absolutely. No, it really did. It really touched me. That's for sure. Now we have to talk about location because, uh, you know, some of this interview is going to be airing on CH Morning Live, which is in Hamilton. So I, uh, okay. So, so Brooke, let's start with you. Tell me a little bit about shooting there. And I loved that waterfall area. Now I'm not, I'm a Toronto girl. I'm not that familiar with Hamilton, but of course, Hamiltonians will be watching this. So Brooke, you start and tell me a little bit about shooting there. Well, I'm a Toronto girl too. So um, I'll, uh, one of my best friends lives in Hamilton. So I've had a couple of chances to go visit her there. Um, and, uh, but this was the first time I got to go to the Ancaster Mill. Yeah. And gosh, gorgeous. it is gorgeous. I mean, we, we it, it, it was interesting shooting during COVID because there's obviously a lot of, um, ooh, a lot of challenges shooting during a pandemic. And one of them is sometimes to find locations, but sometimes the locations then also become available because they're not having, you know, weddings or receptions there. But, um, you know, as soon as you walk into that space and down that pathway and see that waterfall and we were shooting in January, so it was cold and that was a really a frozen waterfall, <laughs> um, but it was so gorgeous. And I think um, there's something about the magic of the locations that just, you know, as an actor, you step onto set sometimes and whether it's the, you know, the, 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 the art department team that has gone in and just sort of Christmify the interior location, or you step into an actual beautiful location like the Ancaster Mill, it kind of lends this sense of magic and uh, on set. Um, so yeah. it, it certainly, I didn't have to like tap into any imagination when I was, was at those locations to just you know, breathe in the beauty of the moment. It was right in front of me. Yeah, and Corey, I mean, for you as a director, not just an actor, but uh, what a gift to have this location. Tell me from your perspective, what it was like to shoot there. It, it, was, it was, the Ancaster Mill is such a beautiful spot. The funny thing is the biggest challenge was in the beginning of the film, it's supposed to look like the mill has been run down for 30 years. And I said, this is so beautiful. How do we make it? How do we do the makeover visually? We actually piece the interior from a different location. Mm. The exterior part was and that the waterfall was a bonus. We went there for, for different locations. Oh my gosh, like what's more romantic than the and you know with the, the ice and everything? And then the chapel was also on that property as well. So we got so many uh and, and her, uh, her character's office is up there. We had so much to draw from from that location and other areas in Hamilton and the Ancaster area. Fergus, Ontario is where we went to, to shoot the uh, um, the bridge sequence. And, you know, it had so much charm, all these different places we were able to sort of cobble together something that hopefully felt like this nice little fantasy town of, of uh, you know, Hawkins Bay. Oh, it made me want to move there. I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> you know where part of it is so you can kind of have half of the yeah. fantasy and uh, yeah. yeah but what is it about small towns like seriously I always think about this as I get older I'm like maybe I want to pack it up and move to a small town you know oh. everybody seems to be you have your you know your community right, right? 
Yeah. Oh, I get that. I mean, just the idea of walking out your front door and inevitably during your day going about it, you're going to see people whose stories, you know, whose families you um, have history with. Um, and I, I can imagine that it adds to a sense of belonging, especially now where everything feels fractured and a lot of our one-on-one um, -on -one or through videos, which I feel very connected with the both of you right now, but I wonder yeah. how, how you know, that works on the psyche on a day-to-day -day basis when yeah. when um, the pastiche of your neighborhood is made up of people whose stories you know intimately or interconnected with your own. Yeah, exactly. Corey, did you want to say something well, about that? It's a sense of history, you know, and, and Ontario in general has so many of these beautiful historic towns. Um, you know, I, I mentioned that, you know, my wife was inspired by where she grew up and it was right. this little town. And sure enough, the mill had been closed down and renovated into apartments and things like that. So those themes... And I've, you know, going through those, you know, parts of Ontario have always loved it. And there's no wonder why they're, they're inherently cinematic because they're just, they, they put you in a place, there's a calmness, there's a communal aspect of it. And for these holiday films, that's often so, so often is the, the themes that you're exploring um, in the film. So it's, and it just looks great with Christmas decorations. Yeah, there's, I mean, there's a sense of timelessness you know? to the architecture yeah. And, yeah. And, and to what you get to see on screen that, also lends itself to a movie that you hope will play seasonally for many years. Yeah. 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 Well, listen, I, I, like I said to you earlier, I, I really did enjoy it and I want to see more adventures from this town. So think about that. You know, it doesn't have to just be Christmas. Like, you know, maybe the next theme will be in the summer. What will happen? You know, there's <laughs> April April season. Limitless. <laughs> That's right. There's more to tell. There's there's so many fun characters that I wish we had been able to spend more time with. So, oh my goodness, yes. Yeah. I, I, I want to have a whole other movie with Ali Chung, her oh. character, Gina. Yes, and, right? And, yes. And, Maybe yeah. her and by Fred Ahmed, yeah. up a romance. Okay, yeah. well, uh, so get, get your wife to start writing already, okay? And if she wants to use my potato theme, it's fine. I, I don't have a problem with that. It's all good. But I want to say I want to thank you both for your time today. Like I said, the movie's adorable, and uh, you guys are great to talk to. And just best of luck with everything, and happy holidays to you both. Thank you so much. Happy holidays. Thank you. Thank Same you to you. So much. Okay, take care. Have a good one. Thanks for having us. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye-bye.